Uh, welcome everyone to this uh, second in the series of our uh, lockdown uh, lunchtime lectures. And today um, I have the pleasure in uh, welcoming Dr. John Sullivan, uh, who is currently the divisional manager at Secunda Exploration. Um, obviously, he's got a, a, a PhD uh, from the University of Pretoria. He started out his career uh, at ISCO as an exploration geologist, moved over to Kumba, uh, naturally, and then uh, Exaro Resources. He was a resident geologist at Hwerth uh, Connect Mine. And uh, then he, was, he joined Cecil, um, essentially as a geological specialist, um, up until his current role of divisional manager. And um, he is a fellow of the GSSA um, as of late last year. And he has also been instrumental in the drafting of the SAMRAC uh, code and the SAMVEL code as well. So his talk today uh, is on um, uh, precision surveys of horizontal drilling, which I'm sure will be an interesting uh, topic. So over to you, uh, Dr. John Sullivan. Hi, thank you. Uh, it's not really a question of, uh, I'm going to give a talk on how it works like, it's more if we can have it some sort of interactive session where I can find out if there's other technologies available to survey directional drilling holes. And the reason for that is we've got some unique challenges with, uh, with directional drilling and maybe for us it's unique. And maybe for the rest of the world, it's not unique, but anyway, so uh, let's see how it goes. So we will I'll give you a short discussion of the problem, just giving you some background information on what Sasol does uh, at Secunda. And then if you can maybe tell us what the possible solution is, uh, I'd appreciate that and what we currently do and how successful we are. And then, as well as to extend a word of welcome to everybody in really trying times. And it's a unique opportunity for all of us and uh, good luck to you where, where all of you are now. So uh, Sasol has got three directional drill rigs. And uh, for the last couple of years, I've drilled more than 200 kilometers per year. I think the record is uh, 210 kilometers of drilling in a year. Uh, if you know South Africa, it's from Secunda to uh, nearly in Rustenburg, which is uh, 200 kilometers away. Already. So for us, it's quite an achievement. Uh, what we do is we place the rig on surface, prepare a pad for it and stay there between six months to a year. <clears throat> we draw from surface. Uh, keep in, in the coal seams and we've got enough rods and our machines is basically strong enough to drill about 1,700 meters. And in doing this, we look for intrusive dikes and then maybe some other structures or cells if we do get cells. So we look for intrusive that we cannot pick up in our normal drilling. We use a survey tool, a general electric survey tool it sends pulses through the water and then the signal is decoded uh, and into a position at the control room so they can see what is up, what is down, what's left and what's right. It is a magnetic tool, so it's influenced by uh, magnetic intrusives or dikes or cells, which is a bit problematic for us. And it influences the accuracy. And then we also do underground horizontal drilling and eventually, if we do mine a, a section, uh, that horizontal drilling is probably four times more than, than the directional drilling. So our problems encountered is the following. If you drill downhill and you put a gyro tool in a hole and you're still going downhill and it measures downhill, that's, that is what our experience is, uh, it's fine. But the moment you go uphill, then the gyro survey fell over. So gyro tool, although it can measure uphill and downhill, it, uh, the, I think the, the mass is a problem. Obviously, as I said, the directional drilling survey tool is influenced by magnetic dikes and cells. The accuracy currently is okay, but it, we could be as far as 70 meters out, which is about two splits over 1,500 which I think is reasonable within the parameters of the machine itself. 
And the question today is maybe a question to all of us is to say, is there technologies available to survey these holes that uh, is not influenced by magnetic rocks and can measure up and down? So probably some sort of gyro tool. And then also the ups and downs is a problem. So this is a, a typical layout of one of our sites. We're currently drilling the site. Uh, we stopped for the lockdown. It's a site about uh, 40 or 50 kilometers away from our offices here in Secunda. Uh, the yellow, as indicated here, is sediments that we draw through the roof uh, rocks. And then we enter into the coal. The depth of this coal seam is about 136 or so meters below the coal seam. So it takes us a bit of a distance to get into the coal seam. It also has quite a thick sill. I think it's about 120 meter thick sill on top at the surface. And then we get into the coal seam. This purple highlights that we've got here is uh, shows that we've actually surveyed it with a geophysical survey tool, a wireline South Africa is our uh, company that does our wireline surveys. And then this red lines is the planning we do. And then, uh, so this is a typical layout of the site. In terms of our horizontal drilling, uh, we get this, this is a section and we stood here on the side of the section here and we drilled this horizontal holes. And what this actually indicates is not actually two or five uh, horizontal drill holes, it's actually two horizontal drill holes, but it's five surveys. So when you survey it again and again and again, we tend to get, I think it's a Spirit Sun type of survey too. And then you'd find that uh, you get uh, differences in the in the actual path of the borrow. Now the problem with that is especially if we want to go and draw directional drilling there we have to avoid those uh, tracks because if we do draw into it and we pump a lot of water into the hole we can actually flood the section. So we need to know the accuracy of those things uh, very well. So if we if we can know what that accuracy is so it, it would help us a lot. Now just a section view of one of our directional drillers. This is the, the site that I've shown to you. It starts off on surface, goes down at about 70 degrees. In the specific blue leg we expected the coal to be at 137 meters below the surface. We got it at 135. Uh, for us that's a bit of a problem because we haven't flattened off yet to get into the coal seam. So here we try to flatten off, get into the coal seam, but this is our problem. We go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down through the, uh, through this coal seam that we're drilling. And this is uh, helping the gyro to, to fall over a bit for us. So that is uh, the complication we have. Uh, this is also another section. Uh, this looks a bit, uh, big but it's two or three meters variance that we have here and then we end up here in the end going quite a while uphill to stay in the coal seam so if you drill down the survey tool I don't know it probably shows you going down and the moment you go up then the maths uh, falls over for us so now the question is how do we survey the ups and downs more accurately and uh, yeah, I hope that there's someone online here today that can help us to help me to understand that a little bit better. And I think it's over to you. Um, thank you, John. Um, since you are co-host, uh, I think the best way to handle it is uh, if you open that participant's pane um, in your screen, at the bottom of your screen, uh, then you you have access to all the speakers and you can unmute everyone since you are co-host and then people can just raise uh, their hand uh, for their suggestions um, on their respective screens okay. and then I think we can handle it like uh, we can handle it that way is that fine yeah. everybody is unmuted oh. 
And please raise your hand uh, just uh, for, for housekeeping purposes. And then, John, you should be able to see some um, people raising their hands and can address, address individually. Thank you. Okay, cool. So far, I don't see any takers for my offer here. I've, I've unmuted all participants. Um, it's going to make it a little bit easier to manage. I see no flags raised at this stage. Um, Craig, because there's a few background noises, sorry, I suggest mute all, and then whoever raises their hands, then we can unmute individually. Um, John can do that as well. OK, I'll um, mute yeah. everybody. Sure. If I can just make a suggestion, the easiest way for a participant to unmute themselves is to hold the space bar down while they speak, and then the moment they lift their hand off the space bar, it will mute again. Oh. Testing, testing. Yeah, works yes. well. Yes, you're in there. Uh, Josh, do you have some recommendations? Um, I don't see any uh, hands, any suggestions for John? No, pretty much just testing that space bar thing. Quite a cool cool tool. We'll use that going forward, but no, no suggestions. Okay. There's nobody from Australia that, uh, that can actually do this because I do a lot of directional drilling underground to degas as far as I know. And I'm sure they want to know what their positions are. Uh, do they have uh, anybody? Mashebulele. Yes, you can speak to Hi, us. Hi John. Um, Hi. Uh, I, I came across something a couple of years ago, and I'm not sure it would be useful for you, but I haven't tested it myself. Yes. Um, uh, Davy Core. Uh, I think it's, it's from um, Sweden or Norway, one of the two. Um, and um, it's a non-gyro based uh, survey too um, sure. and they have a, ver a variety of it that is uh, called uh, Devi Core Flex so it, 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 it essentially uh, flexes to, to your drill parts way um, and, um, and, and it might, might very well work with you. What Devico also has is a uh, David drill device which fits into your drill head and you can intentionally steer your drill head to the direction you want to go. Yes. Um, it, it gives you that capability. Um, uh, I'm not sure if, if uh, they have um, uh, good representation in South Africa at this stage, but they did try to get a uh, partnership with uh, Downhill Survey, um, th that crew that uh, was in Tabazimbi a couple of years back. Yes, I think we have some of those tools in Sasso, but I'm not too sure if anybody actually understands them, but uh, I've heard about those tools, yes. Can you drop me a, a mail to john.sullivan at sasso.com? We'll do after the talk. Cool, thank you. Welcome. John, just a question on, um, uh, I don't have a suggestion for you, unfortunately, but yeah. maybe you can explain to some of us that are not too familiar with the, why the gyro falls over when you drill uphill. It's just, uh, I think the calculations it does we drilled, we tested a gyro tool at one of our borehole's and the moment you go into the coal seam and you start drilling horizontally or or drilling uphill, I think the, the mass tended to fall over because then the machine, it sees the variation, so it sees say a plus one or a minus one or something, and then uh, it doesn't know what to do with it. So uh, it's either that the the software doesn't know what to do with it that uh, we were working with, or we were basically too stupid to, to understand it. So, but what we found that after in the specific hole, we went into the coal seam around 350 meters. And then after that, the surveys were completely out. They, uh, 
they were out by about 300 meters, about 500 meters later. So uh, data was just uh, unacceptable. We couldn't use the data. So if you telling us maybe we, we don't understand what we work with, then fair enough. But uh, I don't, uh, it didn't work for us. Isn't the suggestion then um, maybe speaking to the software provider if it's a if it's a, a simple solution like changing them plus one to a minus one or something like that? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe you have already had, had discussions with them. I'm also not sure that uh, we actually that the survey tools can work horizontally. That a, a gyro tool that uh, measures vertically up and down. Uh, are they able to measure horizontally? Maybe someone can help us here. I see there's some hands. Nolene. Uh, hi there. Hi, Nolene. Um, so our company Reflex has quite a few survey tools and we would be able to assist you with that. Okay. Um, but I'm very, I'm very aware that we're not promoting ourselves here, so I'll take this offline. Okay, that's fine. No, I appreciate it. I know that we are using some of your tools uh, underground in SASO, so uh, if you can help us understand it or so, then I'd appreciate it. And I'm not saying that that holes that was shown there was measured with your tools. But <laughs> it is a problem. Thank you. <laughs> okay, John. Thanks. Gareth? Uh, Gareth, so this has all been in in uh, gold mining uh, mm. in the hard rocks, and we drill we drill current long holes also about twelve hundred fifteen hundred meters. Mm. But we and it depends on your running gear, I suppose. But we 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 tend to just use EMS tools because we've also had trouble verifying any gyro readings that we've been testing. So we use majority gyro um, EMS tools. And then, um, but we pull the, all the running gear out and then run the, the EMS tool ahead of the rods to try avoid yeah. any magnetic interference. Yeah, what we do is uh, we run the tool in the, in the rods itself. So we've got a carrier like a, uh, about a 50 millimeter of just this white uh, water fittings that you put into your basin at home and they've attached the, the cable for the survey tool onto that and they pump it down and they just, uh, they pull it out. So we survey in the, in the rods itself. So, yeah, so you leave your, um, your rods in the hole the whole time. But yeah. Um, we, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, the reason why we do that is because we've got such a lot of uh, cells on top and we draw through the cells. If you don't have the rods in the hole and you try and go back to those, uh, the position, then you, try and stick a thing down the hole that hasn't got a survey tool in front of it. So you don't know which, into which hole you're going. So, and you can bugger up your survey tools that's in front of your rod. So we have to survey in the rods itself. Yeah, understood. So yeah, to, I haven't really got any suggestions for your problem, but what I would suggest is you contact the Reflex or the Devico agents in South Africa. They do offer, I think, non-magnetic EMS tools that could possibly help you with your situation. Oh, okay, cool. Otherwise, they do offer software solutions that you can remotely or automatically upload all the data off your tool almost live and check yeah. where it falls flat and then maybe just correct something on site before you look at the data later. Yeah. But other than that, I don't have any real solution for your horizontal okay. problem. Okay. Thank you. John, uh, just a comment here. Presumably you're able to pick up some of the holes in underground workings and at some point during the life and, and validate yes. uh, the location. Yeah, that's what we do. And that's how we know that uh, the things is about 70 meters out. So, uh, the problem just is what happened in, in some of the sites that we draw at is that the, the vertical depth that we, that we say that the coal seams is in, so we drill a lot of holes around the site. And then we know, let's say the coal seam has got to be at 140 meters. And then the survey shows us no, but it's at 132, for instance. And if you work it down, you're drilling through a, 
Oh, that's exactly going through a diamond hole and you know it's supposed to be 136. And then you go and subtract three or four meters from your, your, your grid there or your planned uh, vertical depth there and then you find, okay, but it's a problem with the surveys because it's uh, the magnetic stuff influences it. Maybe this is a simplistic question, but um, how did the petroleum, the oil and gas guys do it? I mean, for that, for that crowd, 70 meters over 1500 meters is probably not an acceptable error. Yeah, I don't know for them if it is, maybe it is, but uh, I also think for them, they use much bigger equipment than we do. We use a, I think it's a 98 millimeter bit. So it's quite a, a small bit. I think the oil and gas guys, they use six inch rods. And I think we use about uh, three inch rods. So we are much more light duty than what they have. And I don't know if they actually have the problem with the whole straying away from, from where they want it to be. Also, they, I think they survey while they're drilling. Sarah. Sarah, you've got your hand up. Yeah. Sarah Temple, you can go. Someone's just requested that unless you're speaking, can you switch off your video? Most videos are off. Can you hear me now? Yes, can you hear okay. me? Okay. Um, it was a setting in my actual computer, but um, recently I was part of a project called um, on, on Renogen, and maybe you can have a look on them with the ASX listed. And they did um, horizontal directional drilling for gas. And as you said, they, they do um, downhole survey continually while they under, um, while they're drilling, they do a, yes. a continual survey every nine meters. And um, I'm not entirely sure if, I have no idea if the other survey tools would be able to, to work with um, diamond drilling, but we were doing a PCD drilling. And so every nine meters we were getting um, recordings where it would give you your measured depth, your depth and your azimuth. And yeah. um, we weren't able to look at the horizontal with wireline, but we were able to check sort of the, the incline with wireline and it matched. So they were quite happy to carry on using that, that downhole okay. survey information. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no further questions. Nothing more from anybody? I think for me, uh, John, just maybe back to that slide so I can uh, see your email address again. Uh, which one was that? My email address, okay. So yes, please. The first slide, I think it was. Yeah. Thank can you. you see it? Okay. 100%. Yeah, feel free to contact me, please. And if you have any ideas or any uh, experience of it, uh, maybe we, we just need to get clever and uh, work better with our service providers. But anyway, yes. John, there's been one or two requests here for your presentation. Are you willing to share it? Yes, of course. Okay. Um... We'll organize that um, after the meeting. Okay.
Anything else yeah. from anybody? Yeah, if you see my mail, feel free to send me a mail and I'll, I'll send it to you for sure. Great, thanks. I... Sufiso, any comments from you or Nolene? Nothing from me, thanks, Craig. But yeah, just thanks uh, again to John Sullivan. And just to remind everyone of uh, his email address, it's john.sullivan at cecil.com, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. And keep well. If I could just okay. thank you, John, for joining us, as well as everybody else. Thanks so much for joining us today. Yes, thank you. Thank okay, you. I will end the meeting shortly. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you. you.